Good morning. May is Better Hearing and Speech Month. Speech pathologist Laura Cliff joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so the month-long campaign may be coming to an end, but that is no reason to stop raising the awareness. This is something to think about all year. That's right. Okay, so what are some of the most common problems when it comes to kids with hearing and speech? With children, uh, typically you start to notice difficulties when they're preschoolers and uh, people are having trouble understanding them is the most common thing. And uh, often when the parents don't understand is when you have the most concern. And so that's when you would want to seek some help. Because quite often, baby talk or toddler talk, the moms and dads understand, no one else might not. That's exactly it. So if the parents are struggling, then that could be a concern. Yes. Okay. There's also other things too, uh, children with special needs, whether it be uh, autism or Down syndrome, etc. cetera. Uh, they're also going to require some special help as well with communication. And what about hearing with kids? How do you know if they're hearing you well? If there's no startle response, when there's a loud noise that occurs, then that's definitely a red flag right there. Okay. Uh, Also, uh, even just the fact that if they're not babbling when they're around six months of age, or uh, if there's no first words by about the age of a year to 18 months, then there is a concern with hearing as well. Interesting. Okay. And what about for adults? For adults, typically, uh, I guess it's a little more obvious perhaps because usually with adults it's an onset uh, after some kind of uh, disease has occurred or there has been an injury, like uh, say they were in a car accident and there's a brain injury that can affect it or they've had a stroke. Uh, that also affects their speech. So uh, it could be slurred speech. Uh, it could be uh, having difficulty uh, remembering the names of things, uh, that sort of thing. That's something you can watch for in your loved ones as yes, well. Yes, for sure. Not just yourself. And what about hearing for adults? Because sometimes you're, you're straining and you feel like you're not hearing as well as you should or you used to. Yes, uh, it's very common as people get older and they start uh, losing some of their hearing that uh, they'll start turning the volume on that TV up yeah. or the radio <laughs> and uh, asking for repetition a lot or, or they'll just miss parts of a conversation and so they'll be, they'll be misinterpreting what other people say. So it can be a little subtle at first, but those are some of the signs. Well, if you notice any of these symptoms in yourself or in your loved ones, where should you be turning for help? Uh, the best place to go to would be to our website, and that is the Manitoba Speech and Hearing Association website. It's www.msha.com, okay. or sorry, .ca. Okay. And on there, there's resources for who you should reach out to, and yes. they can kind of guide you. Because you were saying that it's very individualized. It's not as simple as getting your eyes checked or getting your teeth cleaned every so often. That's correct. Yes, and also uh, like for parents, you can have your doctor refer your child, pediatrician, public health nurse, uh, there's other professionals as well, Uh, uh, Families First, there's a number of different government uh, agencies that can refer children. And school-aged children, usually through your school, you can refer them. Great, well it's definitely something that you want to keep in mind, something you want to pay attention to. And we have all the links up on breakfasttelevision.ca. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Thanks for taking a quick break. Happy tea. Stay with us.